All right, hey guys, my name is Shadow and welcome back to another video. Today, what we're gonna be doing is repairing a broken G602 and the specific problem that we're gonna be fixing is the problem where when you left click one time, it registers as a double click. So this is actually a hardware problem and to fix this, we're gonna to have to take the mouse apart. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this kind of step by step and hopefully it should be pretty simple. I've never taken this specific mouse apart before, so this is gonna be a learning experience for everybody, and hopefully it's not too hard. So first of all, we have a couple of things here to help with this. We have the actual mouse, of course, and then we have a little packet of replacement mouse feet, and I got this on Amazon for about uh, $8, $8, $7, 8 so not, not terribly expensive, and it actually comes with two sets of feet. It doesn't seem like there's too much difference between these. I read in a review that one set is thicker than the other one, but it, I don't know, they look pretty much the same. I'm, sh I'm sure you guys can't see that on the camera. But yeah, to me, they look pretty much the same. So two sets of mouse feet for about eight bucks, and that is the only thing that we've had to buy because the, the feet on this mouse are actually covering up the screws that we're gonna need to remove. So, okay, we have the mouse, our new sets of feet, and then I've got a screwdriver here. It's magnetic and it has interchangeable bits. And then I also have a little set of precision screwdrivers right here. I don't know that we'll need those. And then over here, I've also got my soldering iron and I don't know if we're gonna need that, but it's there just in case we have to do this. So this particular mouse uses Omron switches and we're just gonna be messing with the left one. I don't know that we actually need to remove it from the PCB in here, but we're gonna find out. So let's actually start taking the mouse apart. And um, yeah, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is actually remove these mouse feet. And I don't think this is going to be too hard of a process. It seems like they're just adhesived on here. So really we're just gonna kind of peel them off and I'm not too worried about damaging this because well, it's already broken and if we don't end up fixing it, well, it's no great loss because I've already got another one. And so that's that's really fine. Oh, okay, it comes off like this. And okay, I can actually already see one of the screws there. There should be two screws under this top one. So pretty much when you take these mouse feet off, you're, you're gonna ruin them. And so that's why we've got new set. Yeah, you don't wanna put the same one back on. Plus these were a little fuzzy anyways. I mean, they're not, they're not dead by any means, but yeah. Okay, so you can see we've got two screws right here under the first mouse foot right there. And we've got, uh, let's see, we've got one, no, that's not one. We've got one, two, three. And then these are mouse feet right here, but I don't believe there are any screws under these central ones right here. Oh, and just FYI, you, you should remove the batteries before you start doing this. So I've, I've already done that. There are no batteries in here but I will just leave the little battery cover plate off and I'll go ahead and take the USB dongle thingy out of there. So then we're gonna just proceed with taking the other mouse feet off and we'll just kind of do the same process. And there it is, so one screw under that one. So we have a total of six screws. Let's hold that so you guys can see it. So we have a total of six screws on the bottom of the G602 here. So it looks like it takes a pretty small bit. So I was gonna use my magnetic screwdriver, but now I'm glad I have this set of small precision screwdrivers over here. So we're gonna end up using these, I think. So let's see what size we need. Let's try the biggest one. Okay, so we actually didn't have a small enough precision screwdriver in this set. So I've had to get my other set of pre precision screwdrivers, which has really small bits. So you are going to need a really, really small Phillips head screwdriver bit to do this. So anyways, on with the deconstruction of the mouse. Let's go ahead and take out all the screws now that we have the proper bit to do that. Okay, so we've removed all six screws from the base and now it looks like it should just come apart. So let's see, yeah, okay. This just comes off like so, you don't have to put anything in there to, to wedge it out or anything like that. Okay, so we just have, it looks like a ribbon cable connecting the two halves here, and it might come off. Okay, so the ribbon cable comes off. There's a little connector right here, 
and there's just this little black piece holding it in and you can just very carefully just lift that off and then the other side is a little connector like this and it has some contacts on it and just be very careful when you're taking it out it just it just comes right out and i actually thought i broke it for a minute but no it's okay it's supposed to look like this so if you get this out it's that's that's good it's supposed to look like that okay so here is the part of the mouse that we're actually interested in and this right here is the switch that has become faulty and we need to open that up to actually repair it okay so it doesn't look like we have to actually desolder anything from the board now i'm just going to use the right switch as a reference but it's actually the left one that we're going to be working on so th this is what we're going to do so these omron switches have little snap-on covers that you just have to kind of lift the okay you can't see that you just kind of have to lift these little tabs up and then just lift them off and then there's a metal plate thingy inside and we just have to bend a piece back into shape so this isn't actually the one we're going to work on that's just the one that we can see more clearly it's actually this one that we're going to be working on now um it's going to be kind of hard to get in there we have to kind of get up i can't see that we have to kind of get up under uh these things here and again okay let me see if i can focus on this better so you guys can see okay Let's try this. Okay, so we have to get up under kind of right here on the edge where there's this little clip that fits down over a thing right here. I'm sorry this is really dark and you guys can't really see very well. I'll try to keep this in, in focus a little bit better. But I don't know if you guys can see, there's a little clip right here. So we have to lift this tab up over it and there's one on both sides. So I've got an X-Acto knife right here. But it may turn out that we need something a little bit more durable than this, because while this is a really thin blade and it will probably fit under there very well, it's also really flexible and prone to snapping, and I don't want to break this and have little pieces of razor go flying everywhere. So that would be bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try this, and if it seems like this is not going to work, I have actually a razor knife here with, with an actual razor, We'll see what works. Again, I've never disassembled these before. And if you guys have a better way to do this, leave that down in the comments. So this is my first time doing it. So we're, we're kind of learning this together. Okay, so I'm going to set this over here on the table and I'm going to focus back on it and try and see if we can get this little switch open. Okay, I got it. All right, I've got the back one up. And okay, I think I broke it. Crap. Okay, I didn't actually break it. Okay, but what what happens is when you take this cover off, you have to be very careful. And I'll zoom in on this. Well, I won't zoom in, but I'll focus on this. This tiny thing right here between my fingers is actually the button. And there's nothing holding it in there once you take the housing off. So this is the housing. And what I've just found out is it's very much easier to pry it up from the back. Uh, from Okay, from the back right here. And just pull it forward you don't actually have to pry up both sides just one side and then kind of pull it off but be careful because your switch is going to fall out or your, your button is going to fall out basically okay so now that we've got that off let me see if i can focus on the actual board here okay so here is the little piece of metal that is actually your switch so it looks like what happens is this gets bent down a bit and we just need to take this piece of metal off and kind of flatten it out somewhat. So let's see if we can figure out how to do that. Okay, so that was not terribly difficult to get out of there. So this is the piece of metal. Let's focus on this. Okay. Now it goes this way. Okay, you can't see that. But it goes, you know what? Let me hold this with some needle nose pliers so that you guys can actually see. Okay. So here we go. Let's focus. Okay. Now, if you guys can see this, here we go. All right, there. All right. Now, this is mostly a flat piece of metal with a couple of holes in it. And as you guys can probably see, there's a little hook part on the bottom. 
Now what we need to do is kind of flatten that out. We don't want to flatten it all the way out, but we do want to make it flatter than it is now, I think. So let's see if we can do that. Okay, so what I've done is I just pressed down on this on this hook piece of metal a bit until it was, you know, less round and a little bit more flat. And that should fix the problem. I don't know. We're going to reassemble the mouse now and see if that's fixed the problem. And if it hasn't, we'll just go ahead and replace the entire switch. But theoretically, this should be the fix. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in the switch, reassemble the switch, and then reassemble the whole mouse. Okay, so basically what we did was we took the little piece of copper that was on, on the inside of the switch, and there was the little hook that was hanging down. I just pressed down on it with the edge of the X-Acto knife and just flattened it out a little bit. Once you manage to get that back on, then you just reinsert the little button into the housing and you just clip the housing back down. And it's good if you hold this upside down while you do that because that way the little button will not fall out. But now it's back in there and if I click it, well, I can hold it over here. And if I click it, you can probably hear it making the clicky noise. So it's, it's in there. And now we're gonna reassemble the mouse and see if it actually works. Okay, so I didn't actually have any screen capture software installed on the computer that I tried this on. And I tried to just capture the screen by pointing the camera at it. However, that didn't work out. There was glare and we couldn't, I couldn't really see what, you wouldn't have been able to see anything. So anyways, I'll just tell you what happened. So what happened is the double click problem is actually fixed. However, now it's got kind of the opposite problem where if I click like anywhere on the right mouse button, it's pretty normal and the click is pretty even and I can actuate it from pretty much anywhere. However, what, what's actually happened now is you have to click right here, like on the very lower part. Yeah, it won't actuate if you don't click right around this area right here, but it, it did fix the double click problem. So that's, that's good. However, we're going to do a follow-up video to this where we actually just replace that Omron switch. Maybe both Omron switches, actually. And yeah, so yeah, you have to click right around here. So if you do this better than I did and you don't flatten that button out too much, then this will probably work better. But yes, if we click up here, I'm pushing this down and it's not actuating. But if, I, but if I click up here on the right button, it's, it's actuating and you can hear it clicking and I can feel it clicking and it registered as a click on, on the computer, anywhere on the right button, but on the left button, yeah, I got, I got nothing about halfway up. So that's gonna end this video and I'm not gonna put the mouse feed on here right now because I'm gonna wait for part two of this video where we actually replace the switch so look forward to part two of this and then this will actually work also some of you guys may be noticing like what appear to be scratches on this mouse um, these are not actually scratches this is just some stuff that you can easily wipe off with a cloth for example if we take like a microfiber cloth or something i guess it doesn't have to be a microfiber cloth but you can just wipe this off and then it actually looks okay. So yeah, these are not actually scratches, it's just scuffs, I guess, but they, they come off, so it's not a big deal. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of this video, guys. I, I hope you enjoyed it, and yeah, so that that kind of half fixed the problem. I mean, it did fix the problem that we set out to fix. It just created a new problem in the process. So yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna do a part two where we replace the switch and I'll, yeah, okay. So anyways, like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it, leave a comment, let me know what you guys thought. Um, this was my first time actually disassembling a G602 or even disassembling uh, an Omron switch. So I didn't really know what to expect. So yeah, let me know if you guys have a better way to do this or any suggestions on how we could actually improve this process or anything like that, yeah, just leave all that stuff down in the comments. That would be cool. So thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for part two coming up, I don't know, in a couple of weeks or something like that. And yeah, cool. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.